Okay, Junior Anatomy continue. We were talking about your skeleton, which is your collection of bones. There's over 200 of them. And uh, those are the parts that give you shape and protect you and such. Check out the last video for the recap. We did the axial skeleton. Axial skeleton, like an axle and a wheel. You know when you have um, a wheel and it's got that little bar that goes through the middle that the wheel turns around? That's called the axle, right? And there's the other wheel over there. So axial means right through the middle. The axial skeleton, I actually have some models, is made up of your, your, your skull, your face, your jaw, sometimes called your head, right? All those bones. And then a whole backbone that ends at this special uh, bone called the sacrum. And then a bunch of ribs and a breastbone. And this is uh, a skull. Hopefully I'm staying on camera here. Okay. Now this is just a plastic skull. It's not real. But if you can see, I don't know if you can see those stitches on, or stitches, those sutures. You can see those lines. Those are the type of joint that articulation that doesn't move, right? Those are called sutures, right? It's kind of like stitches, but that's where the bones sort of knit together. That's why they're called sutures, right? And this is your skull. It would protect your brain. If we were to open that up, you could see inside where your brain would sit and all these different little hollows and such. That's a little more advanced than you want for a junior anatomy course. But this top part that looks like a cereal bowl is called the calvaria, right? This is the, the part that sits on top. And if you can see the little lines in there, those are where the little arteries and veins in your head are in, your brain is in there so tight that it presses into the bone uh, like a stick into wet clay and leaves those impressions. Sometimes people think your brain is like a glob that floats around in a fish tank, like in your head and it, it moves and sloshes around, but it, it does not. It is in there so tight, there's very little wiggle room at all. There's some uh, fluid pressure that holds your brain in place. We'll talk about that in the physiology part uh, later. But it doesn't move at all. So when you move the head around, your brain's not like smooshing around on the inside of that. Your bones protect your brain uh, from both external damage, like something hitting you in the head or you fall and bump your little noggin. Uh, but also from the inside, it holds your brain so tight that it doesn't let it slosh around. Now, if you move your head too violently or get hit, that can cause an injury called a concussion that can cause some damage to your brain. So you gotta be careful not to hit your head and wear your helmets uh, when you're riding your bike or practicing any kind of sports that might involve a head injury. Then you have some of these bones here, like this thin one on the side. You can see I put my finger through that little arch. That's your cheekbone. So if you feel right under your eyes, that little rounded part, that's your cheekbone. That's called your zygomaticus zygomaticus and your cheekbone on the side is where your jaw muscles attach that move this part to help you chew or, or, or chomp and if you touch the side here and clench your jaw you can feel those muscles swell and then this part uh those are your eye sockets or your orbital uh the orbital bones your nose would normally come off here but most of your nose if you grab it and move it you can feel it move and shift all around. It's cartilage, which is a type of connective tissue, like a soft bone. And that would stick out here. And then, like I said, this is your face. This is your maxilla. Your maxilla doesn't move, just your jaw. The jaw is called the mandible, and it doesn't move. Now, you don't have a rubber band holding your jaw on, like my little friend Steve here, but um, you have cartilage and muscles and such, which we'll get to in another video. So your head sits at the top of your axial skeleton. And then this is the backbone. All right. So this would be kind of how, let's see if I can get Steve. That's how Steve would sit. So that's your axial skeleton, right? Steve doesn't have a neck, but you get the idea. The axial skeleton wouldn't include the, these parts. This is called your pelvis. And that's just hanging on or appended to your axial skeleton. Also, my model doesn't have ribs, but that's okay. Because it kind of gets in the way. What I can show you is this is the occipital bone. That's the bone at the back of your, your head. And then these first seven down to about here would be your neck bones. And you can see how it's all little blocks that go up. They're not like I drew them, just round circles. 
uh, they're actually pretty complicated uh, structures. They have little parts that stick out on the side. These are transverse processes, and a process just means to, to stick out. And then they have these parts that stick out <clears throat> to the back called the spinous process. And when you run your fingers down someone's back or down your own back up the middle and you feel those little knobs and down your neck, that's what those, you're, those you're, are what you're feeling. If you feel at the base of your neck, you'll feel a really big knob of bone. That is C7, the seventh cervical vertebra. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that is this big one right here that sticks out. That's called the vertebral prominence, and that's how I know where my neck ends and my back begins. If I did have ribs, they would stick out here, brace against this transverse process and curve around to the front. And then they make that big rib cage. Sometimes it's called a rib cage because it looks like a cage. These little yellow things sticking out, that's part of your nervous system. We'll come back to that later. You get down to the bottom of your vertebral column, you see that special bone that's shaped like a triangle that's called your sacrum. That's your most important bone. Uh, the ancient people that named the bones named that the sacrum because it's the, the sacred bone because everything seemed to sit on top of it like a keystone. But we don't want to get into that too much right now. So there's your vertebral column, rib cage, and your skull, and that makes your axial skeleton. All right? And we talked about how many bones are in there already of the 200. Now you've got your appendicular skeleton. This is your upper limb and your lower limb. Sometimes people say leg and they mean this whole thing, but technically your leg is just from your knee to your ankle. From your knee to your pelvis, this is your thigh. So you got to use the right words. If you went to the doctor and said, oh, my, my leg hurts, he's going to look down here below the knee. But if you really mean you got hit in the thigh, you need to say thigh. Just like from my shoulder to my elbow is my arm. And from my elbow to my wrist is my forearm. The Latin words are brachium and antebrachium, but you don't have to know that. All right, so we have my axial skeleton and we have two bones that hold my upper limb to my axial skeleton. One's a thin one in the front that curves and that's called your collar bone because that's right where the collar of my shirt rests. Or I could call it a microphone bone, I guess, because that's where my microphone's at. But it's this thin little bone in the front called the collarbone, and you can feel that one its entire length too. You can palpate. Remember that word? Palpate. You can feel the whole thing. <clears throat> on the back side of your body, back here is another weirdly shaped bone. It's kind of like a triangle. That's called your scapula, and that sits back here on the back side. The scapula's got a little divot in it. All right, right here, like a little, a little cup in the corner called a glenoid. All right, and in that glenoid is another bone that comes down like this. That's called your humerus. All right, your humerus is the arm bone. So there's one bone that attaches to my scapula in its glenoid cavity, which is attached to my collarbone. And that makes my shoulder, right? So the glenoid cavity, and a fancy word for cavity is fossa, that makes my shoulder, right? My shoulder is actually where my humerus touches my glenoid, my arm goes to my scapula, my scapula and clavicle come together, and my clavicle and my sternum touch together, and my shoulder blade and my ribs. All four of those joints or articulations are your shoulder, <clears throat> sometimes called a shoulder complex. Okay. <clears throat> it, uh, complex is a good word because <clears throat> it can be very complex. At the end of your humerus, that's a medial epicondyl ridge there, don't worry about that. You have two other bones, one that attaches on the back of your humerus and goes all the way down, and another little one that comes all the way down. They have two bones in there. The one that's on your thumb side is called your radius. We talked about that before. And the one on the uh, elbow side is called the ulna, the elbow side, the pinky side. You can touch your ulna at your elbow tip and slide all the way down to your pinky side. 
and then the one on the thumb side is the radius. So usually when we draw a person out, we're naming the bones. We always have them stand like this, like I'm drawing uh, this Steve on the board here. It's called anatomic position. You just stand up with your feet together or parallel, eyes looking ahead, and your palms facing forward. That puts my thumb on the outside. We do that so that if my hand was turned inside, we wouldn't get confused over which bone is which. The radius is always on the thumb side, and the ulna is always on the pinky side. <clears throat> Let's draw um, an ulna and a radius on that side. Now you've got eight little bones in two rows. Those eight little bones for your wrist are called carpals. <clears throat> right? And if you look at your wrist, I don't know if I can get this in camera, and you can see there's little... There's little lines on my wrist and my skin when I fold it. See, when I fold my wrist, I make those little two lines. If you look at your wrist right now and fold it, your skin will make a couple of really thick lines. This is called a, a proximal carpal crease and a distal carpal crease, or just wrist lines. All eight of those bones are stacked up between those two lines of your skin. You can grab just with your finger and thumb around that part you can encircle that. That's your entire wrist in there. And your wrist can bend and extend. It can go side to side. It can twist. It can go all sorts of ways because it's got so many of those bones sliding around on each other. At the end of your carpal, you have one, two, three, four, five hand bones. Those are called metacarpals. And then at the end of each of your hand bones that you can feel, you've got one, two, three finger bones. And you can tell because when you bend your fingers, there's little lines on your fingers. So at the end of my hand bone, there's a little bone here, a little bone here, and a little bone there. So there's three of them for each finger. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Except in your thumb. Your thumb only has two spaces, a proximal or close and a distal or far away one. So there are <clears throat> three, six, nine, 12, 13, 14. So there are 14 of those phalanges. That's what they're called, phalanges. <clears throat> um, there are five metacarpal and eight carpals two bones in the forearm, a bone in the arm, and two in the shoulder. One called the clavicle, and the one in the back is called the scapula. You might call that your shoulder blade, and your clavicle has another name, collarbone, but these are the, the technical names for them. So, oh, I didn't draw Steve's other hand on this side. Thumb. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. All right, it's a terrible hand. So his left arm is somehow gigantic compared to his others. That's all right. So let's count these up. We got 14 phalanges, and then you have five metacarpals and eight carpals. So just in your hand and wrist, add that up. How many bones is that? Just in your hand and wrist. <clears throat> 14. And five and eight you've got 27 bones just in your hand and wrist <clears throat> then two in the forearm 28 29 humerus 30 scapula 31 clavicle 32 your upper limb has 32 total bones just on your right side don't forget on your left you have the same number so that'd be another 32 bones. So of both of your upper limbs, you have 64 bones. 64 bones in your upper limbs. There's only 200 total, and we already have almost 80 bones in the axial skeleton. So just our upper limbs, there's almost, uh, almost half of the bones just in your upper limbs. Okay. <clears throat> now let's talk about the lower limbs. This would be fairly easy. I'm going to draw it just on one side so Steve doesn't look too funny. 
I don't know why I named it Steve, but what are you going to do? Can't back up at this point. All right, so let's draw uh, Steve's lower limb on the other side. I'm going to leave the big limb, uh, upper limb on this side because it, it uh, shows you how similar they are. Okay. So the first thing you have attaching to your sacrum is a weird shaped bone called a pelvis. And I'll draw that out in a little bit. You got a right and left pelvis. Just like on our model, you got a right and left pelvis. Sometimes, and this would be your thigh bone, I'll show you in a second. Sometimes when people say put your hands on your hips, you put your hands here, but that's your hands on your pelvis. Your hip joint is actually down here lower. So you can feel the top of your pelvis. Right? Sometimes um, mistakenly called a hip bone, but it's not. You have your pelvis. Just like up here in your upper limb, you have a scapula and a clavicle. Here you have a pelvis. Out of your pelvis comes another bone that sticks out and it's really long and it's got a little crook in it. It kind of bends, okay? So it sticks out this way and then it turns and goes all the way down and then up and it's got a big knob on the side. That bone is in your thigh and it's called a femur, okay? Your femur bone. Your femur bone is just one in your thigh, just like your humerus is just one in your upper limb. <clears throat> The humor or the femur sits on a long bone that you call your shin bone, but it's actually called your tibia. Let's move Steve's hand number here. Your tibia. And just like your forearm has two bones, your leg has two bones. You have a tibia and then you have a little tiny bone called a fibula. And that runs all the way down. And if you feel on, um, <clears throat> if you go down just above your shoe, you can feel this little knob on both sides. Sometimes people call those ankle bones. Those little knobs are the end of your tibia on the inside. And the end of your fibula on the outside. And they make a little space where your ankle bones are. And then you have ankle bones, foot bones, and toe bones. Now, just like the hand, it was called uh, carpals in the wrist, metacarpals in the hand, and then phalanges. <clears throat> when you get down to your ankle, the ankle bones are called tarsal bones. And then your foot bones are called metatarsal bones. And then your little tiny bones in your toes are called uh, phalanges, same as in your hand. But you would just say foot phalanges, right? So if, if I said uh, I broke my phalange, you'd say which phalange? Hand phalange or foot phalange? You would say foot phalange or fingers and toes is the way you would probably refer to them. Uh, and now just like in the hand, each of your toes, so you can get your foot out right now and look at it, each of your toes has three bones in it, just like your finger. It has a, a close, a middle, and a far away. Proximal, middle, distal, phalange. Except your big toe, just like your thumb, only has two bones. So your big toe, even though it's bigger, has two bones, and your pinky toe, even though it's smaller, has three bones in it. It's weird, but believe me, it's in there. If you feel real, uh, real careful on there, palpate, you can find those. So same thing, down in the feet we have 14 phalanges, five metatarsals, but the, the tarsals, there's only seven of them. That's weird. There are eight carpals, but seven tarsals. Eight wrist, seven in the ankle. The um, two in the leg, the tibia, oh, I forgot to tell you the other one, and the fibula, the fibula. You have a femur, and then you have a pelvis. Now your pelvis is made up of three bones that grow into one bone. Just like your skull, the bones don't connect until you get up to about um, uh, a year old and you start walking, then they're harder at five and eight and puberty and teenager. So they fuse together. So you have one pelvis, but it was really, it was really uh, three bones originally. We'll come back to that uh, another part. Actually, no, I'll just tell you now. 
So three parts of your pelvis. You have a pubic bone, an ischial bone. Ischial is far, uh, fun to say. And then you have an ilium. The ilium is the part on the side that where your belt sits. This big wide one's called the ilium. And then on the back, you got this little part that comes out that's got a little hole through it. This is where your hamstrings attach right back here under your butt muscle. That's called the ischium, the ischial tuberosity. And when you sit down on a chair, those are the bones you're sitting on. Does that make sense? So sometimes they're called sit bones, but that's a terrible idea. And then in the front, the two sides of your pelvis join together uh, right in the front, and this is called your pubic bone, right? And this forms a little canal, and this is where you have openings for your organs later, so you can like, uh, you can urinate and defecate. That's where those openings are, is in the bottom there. This is usually covered with a lot of muscle and connective tissue, so all your guts don't just drop out of the bottom on the floor when you walk around, a lot of muscle. But those are your pubic bones in the front, your ilium on the side, and the ischium in the back. And right where the ilium, ischium, and pubis join together, they form a little, a little socket called an acetabulum. And that's where your thigh bone goes into, and that's your hip, right? This big knob is called a trochanter, and that's where a lot of muscles attach, like your big, your big butt muscle that helps you move your leg to kick, jump, run, climb. Okay. So you have one pelvis made of those three, one femur, that's two, Tibia, fibula, that's three, four. Tarsals, there's seven of those. So now we're up to 11. Five metatarsals, that's five more. So now we're up to 16. And then 14 phalanges, we said. So what's 16 and 14? So 30 so far, just on one side. Remember, we're counting the pelvis as one and not as three. If we had counted it as three, we'd have to add a couple. There's one more bone in your lower limb that's missing. What do you think that is? So palpate your lower limb and see if there's another bone that I didn't, that I didn't mention. All right? Your kneecap. There's an extra bone in your lower limb that's on the front called a kneecap. So that puts us up to 31. If we count the pelvis as just one instead of three. So we got 31 total. 31 on each side. 31, 31 would be 62. So we got 62 for the lower limb if we count the pelvis as one, okay? And now we get down 126. More than half of your 200 bones are just in your limbs. So that's a lot. And then you've got all those ribs and all those vertebra and then your skull and face. And if you toddle those all up, you'd have over 200. 206 is what they usually say, but sometimes people have extra bones like under their big toe or uh, what's called a wormian or vermian bone in their suture. And then you have 32 teeth or you will have 32 teeth when you're all the way grown. Although you might take some of them out like called wisdom teeth or have some replaced or have uh, some fake teeth because you got whacked in the mouth one time, broke your, broke your bones that your teeth. So that's a lot of the bones. All the green stuff was your appendicular skeleton. And then uh, they append to your axial skeleton. And now that we know um, the names of all the bones, or most of the bones, we'll talk about how a bone grows. And then I wanna start talking about um, muscles and joints. So that's coming up next. Okay.